is Caitlin Hughes and I realized that I filmed so many clips and I have been having such a great time that I had forgotten to actually sit down and explain any of what I'm doing in any of them. So basically just like small life updates. Things have been going really great. Um, we are still in Louisiana. We're loving it. We're having a great time and we're trying to kind of make the most of our time here. We have been really feeling in the spring mood lately. So one thing that I have really wanted to get back into is traveling, focusing on embracing life. Long story short, cause I'll go into it cause it gets crazy. One of my best friends from college, Emma, who you'll meet and you'll see in this video, um, she and I haven't seen each other for like two years, which is insane. We grew up living very close to each other and then we both went to JMU, had all the same classes pretty much. We studied English and secondary education and then we got our masters together. And one of the things that we really bonded over is the What We Said podcast. And if you watch my videos, you've definitely heard me talking about this podcast. It's my absolute favorite podcast I've ever listened to. It's just such a good feeling. It's Chelsea Jade Curtis and JC Marie Smith, and they have a podcast, the What We Said podcast. Listening to their podcast feels like a sleepover with your best friend. Like you're just chatting. They have people write in submissions and stuff like that and answer questions, give advice, like just crazy stories. They have all kinds of stuff. It's so fun. And so Emma and I really bonded over that. We both love that show. Um, and we, we, really kept in touch a lot through that podcast of just almost like a podcast book club. So the What We Said podcast currently on a tour right now. And we're like, well, what if we actually try to see them on tour? That'd be so cool. So we were looking at their dates and stuff and one of them was Nashville, Tennessee. So Emma is actually in Tennessee because she's getting another degree. She's a smart girl. So let's see if we can even get tickets because they sell out so fast. So we did, we got tickets, so we were like, okay, well, what about flights? What about, do we have work that day? All these things. I didn't have work that day. Found flights that were pretty cheap. My husband was just gonna be coming home from the field, so he'd be home to watch Shelby and Voodoo. So it was just like so many things. We found an Airbnb like right across the street. It was just kind of crazy how easily things were coming together. And yeah, we just felt like, oh, such, lucky girl syndrome manifesting this to be. We booked everything and we were ready to go. So <laughs> then, you know, after weeks of my shouting out into the universe of how lucky we were and everything is just falling into place for us, the Friday of the show comes along and I was supposed to fly from here to, I had a connecting flight. So I was flying from Alexandria to Dallas to Nashville. And it's like, everything's going okay. I got to Alexandria, my husband dropped me off and the flight was a little bit delayed. So I was a little worried. They were saying there was something wrong with the flight, which is not what you want to hear. But so then we took off, we landed in Dallas. I had like less than 30 minutes to make my flight. So I sprinted and made it and everything was fine. Boarded my flight from Dallas to Nashville and I started feeling really sick. Just, it was so rocky. There was such a rocky flight. So I was like, oh gosh, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel good. Like, shouldn't we be landing soon? People were starting to kind of get restless. Um, and I was in the middle seat. So I was sitting between two really, really nice people. Um, and all of a sudden the pilot comes on the speaker and says, that all the radios in the national airport are down because of tornadoes and like 80 mile per hour winds and things like that. So we could not land in Nashville. So we were going to Memphis. So I was like, okay, what does that mean? You know, where are we gonna be staying in Memphis? Should I get a rental car? Like, are they even gonna have the show if it's literally, have their, if they're having tornadoes? like? Is Emma okay? Cause she's driving. Like there were so many things. It was like, ah, uh, uh, all right. Like let's just get there, land and figure it out. Originally my flight was supposed to land in Nashville at 3 p.m. And then the show wasn't until 8 p.m. So we'd have plenty of time. We could meet up, you know, have dinner or something, go to the Airbnb, just refresh and relax until the show. And so I landed in Memphis. We were waiting and waiting. People were very, very restless. I just want to make sure if you see a name 
Um, we found out that like four or five other flights were diverted also and that nobody was landing in Nashville. So there were like thousands more people in this airport than were already supposed to be at the airport. <laughs> so it was flooded. It was very tense. People were very unhappy. I think airports, air travel is great, but I have, I really don't have the best luck with it, honestly, or I haven't in recent years. Um, yeah, it's just been difficult and people get so aggravated, which I am very sensitive to. I, I like, oh, I just get nervous or anxious when people are yelling at the um, gate attendants or different things like that. I just, I try to just go off and find a seat and wait until we're given more information. So it was very tense um, and we were waiting and waiting, waiting, waiting hours. Um, and our, the app was saying one thing and the gate attendants were saying another thing and we couldn't get any information. And so I was thinking, okay, well, I can't rent a car because all the rental cars were apparently booked. Um, I can't have Emma come get me because I don't want her driving through tornadoes and there are apparently trees down anyway, so I don't even think she could get to me. She made it to Nashville. So that was, you know, at least one thing that I was like, okay, I'm not worried about that because she's at the Airbnb, she's safe. And I was like, all right, so how am I gonna get there? And it was like, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, eight o'clock. I was like, I'm missing it. I'm missing the show. And so I told her, I was like, go ahead. Like, I'm gonna, fingers crossed, if I can make it, I will just literally Uber to the show and show up with my like rolling carry on or who cares, you know? But worst case scenario, like let's, let's just plan for that and I'll text you updates. And so I was getting to a point where I was like, we're not gonna leave until 10 p.m. We're not gonna leave until 11. I was thinking, you know, I was flying out literally the next day. It was gonna be a really, really quick trip. It's already so late. Should I just fly home? Like, what, what do I do? And I decided, okay, let me just get in line and talk to the gate attendant and see. I mean, they, they have more information than I do. So things have kind of died down because we're gonna be waiting for so much longer anyways. People have kind of just gone to go get food and things like that, so let me just go and talk to them. The guy at the front of the line asked the gate attendant, um, you know, well, what about that flight over there? Are they leaving or are they going to Nashville right now? Um, and he was like, okay, well, let me go check. So he sprinted over there, sprinted back, and was like, yes, but they only have three tickets left or three seats left. And I was like, okay, well, like maybe this is, this is a chance. And so he gave us three, you know, each of us, I was the third person in the line, he gave us each a ticket. When he was telling us that, the people that were left around were like, oh, oh my gosh, okay, that flight's going. So they all sprinted over there to get in line to try to get on that flight. And luckily we had tickets, but it was just, it was such like a crazy rush. So I was like, okay, well, I've got my ticket, I better go over here. And I walked over and they called my name and so I, it was like, okay, like I'm, I'm leaving, it's like nine o'clock. It was very close to nine. So I was like, well, if the show is two hours, then maybe I'll make it and I, I don't know. So I was just like, well, whatever, I'll just go. I'll at least get to have the morning, the next morning with Emma and just hang out. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll make it. So I hopped on this flight. People were so angry and it was just so stressful. Another thing was that because there were so many flights, and this happened once we got to Nashville as well, because so many flights had been diverted and then reintroduced into Nashville, they didn't have enough gate guards. So like you couldn't break off and taxi away because there was nobody to kind of like, I don't know how planes work, but, but send you off through the gate. And then once we got to Nashville, there was nobody to open up the gate for us, I guess. So it was just, it was crazy. It was, I've never seen an airport or two airports, Memphis and Nashville, that swamped, um, but it was wild. So I made it on. I got incredibly lucky to get that ticket and that man was so nice. got on the plane, I felt so lucky. I had so much leg room. It was just like, this is a better seat than I was going to have on my original flight. It was crazy. So I was like, all right, maybe I'll make it. So we landed in Nashville. It was only like a 25 minute flight or something like that from Memphis to Nashville. It was super short. And so we land, I get an Uber really quick. I text Emma, I'm like, okay, I'll meet you at the venue. Worst case scenario, if I miss it, I'll just meet you at the front door. 
Um, and then we, I, we found out later we had a miscommunication. So she was so sweet and was like, oh, well, I, you know, she's not going to be able to get into the Airbnb. So she sprinted after the show to go let me into the Airbnb when I was going to meet her at the venue. So we just missed each other. But it was so funny because we had both been like talking about our outfits and what we said, Chelsea wears blue and JC wears pink and they have such cool, like personal styles and, and show styles. And so we were like, oh, how, what are we gonna wear? How are we gonna dress? And all the girls there were so stunning. Like just the girls to show up, everybody was dressed so cute, you know, all done up and hair and eye makeup. I had brought like pastel blue and like glitter and stuff like that to wear. Um, and I got, I got out of the Uber in front of this be like beautiful array of, of girls coming out of this show and I was in my like grimy sweatpants and luckily my what we said merch, Valley Girls merch sweatshirt, but yeah, <laughs> my rolly bag and I'm like my friends in here, <laughs> just like just so not embarrassing because people were so sweet. I ran into a group of girls and they're like, oh, did you miss it? Like. We heard about all the flights and stuff. Some were canceled, a lot of them diverted, all that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, it sucks, but you know, it's okay. And um, they were like, well, it was, you know, it was great. I'm so sorry you missed it. And you know, they, they were like, message them. They're so nice, they'll respond. I was like, okay. But, um, but yeah, so everybody was super, super nice. I should have taken a picture. I don't know why I didn't. It was just such a goofy thing, but I was like, oh, I'm looking for my friend. Does anybody know where the elevator is? So I'm like wandering around like Mr. Magoo and um, yeah and then I realized I call her and I was like hey are you upstairs I don't remember what she said but but then we realized our miscommunication and um, so I was like okay well I'll meet you over there and I rushed over there and we just had the best sleepover like I said we haven't seen each other in like two years so it was just literally so good it felt so good to like reunite and get to chat and just catch up on everything we kept telling each other like it feels like no time has passed like it's been so long but we're just jumping right back into where we've been it's oh my gosh she's such an amazing friend she's such an amazing person um it was just it really felt like good in my heart to see her it was awesome so then we had a sleepover we got to sleep in it was so nice the airbnb was great really centrally located <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so then the next morning we went to brunch we went to a place called two hands which was amazing like inside it was beautiful but the food was so so good <laughs> super nice we didn't make a reservation because we didn't know what we were doing and we were able to sit at the bar have a great time and then we kind of wandered around went shopping um, and sightseeing and stuff and just again catching up and, and chatting it was so fun <laughs> So she, she drove me to the airport. That's so nice. It's so nice when people like drive you to or pick you up from the airport. It's just such a loving, kind gesture. So we said goodbye. We've been keeping in touch and we've, we've been talking of like ways that we're going to get together again or FaceTime dates or something like that. Um, but it was so fun. And then the flight back, of course, complete 180 from the flight there, just so easy so calm so peaceful i always like to go to the uso lounges 
Um, you just need your military ID. I've been to a couple different ones. I've been to the Dallas one. I've definitely been to the to the Nashville one. Um, and some are very different and it's all volunteer based. Um, some of them are much bigger than others. I know the one in Dallas is massive. It has a full library. The one in Nashville was just so sweetly attended. The people were so kind. It was smaller, but it was just super functional. They had great snacks, very fast Wi-Fi, great charging stations. They had a little computer room. And from what I gather, there was always like a, a more open area where you can get snacks and then a quiet room with kind of the lights dim so you can kind of rest and everything so i definitely recommend seeking those out if you're able to go to one i didn't know they were a thing i thought they were only for the soldiers and it turns out they're also for families which is so nice um i can only imagine especially for parents if you're traveling with a bunch of kids or if you're kind of overwhelmed with travel it, it's such a calm quiet place to go it just makes the whole travel experience so much better so i felt very very lucky to get to uh, go to one of those in nashville um, and then, yeah, we came home. We uh, have been having a really nice kind of quiet time here. We've been playing tennis. We've been, you know, going out for runs and stuff like that. We're trying to go to the lake. Um, there are a couple lakes around us. We've been trying to do a lot more outside and get to explore more. It really feels like home now. We lived here about two years. Um, and it's funny. I mean, it's such a shock to the system, or at least it was for me when we first moved down here. Um, and then a year in, it feels like, okay, yeah, we're getting adjusted and, and this is my home. This is where I live now. And now it's like, oh, I've lived here forever, <laughs> you know, and it's really, really nice. And also recognizing that, you know, we're going to be moving again, um, at some point. So I want to make sure that we're making the most of our time here because we really do love it and we really are enjoying ourselves so i think we've got a lot of really exciting things coming up so thank you guys so much for watching and following along i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you in the next video bye